We need to chat about all of the new makeup, skincare, fragrance products that have been recently launched at Sephora. This is all of the stuff I've been testing over the last month or so. There's a lot of hits, there's a lot of misses, and I figured let's go ahead and run through these with you. I'm gonna do mini reviews. I'm gonna let you guys know if these products are actually worth the hype. Most of these products are relatively new to the market. Some of them are just newer to me, but I'm excited to chat about all of them with you guys today. I will go ahead and list and link everything I talk about in today's video in the description box down below for you. But without further ado, let's get started. I want to start with a big hit, in my opinion. These are the newest lip launches to the House Labs line. These are called the House Labs PhD Hybrid Lip Glaze Plumping Gloss, and I have two shades. This one is Persimmon, and this one is Cocoa. I really love these. I have the shade Cocoa on my lips today over a lip liner that we're gonna chat about later in this video, but these are such nice nice glosses. I would say this is that perfect combo of like a lip oil and a lip gloss. They're hydrating. They go on thick, but they're definitely not sticky. I would almost consider them like a glossy liquid lip balm type vibe. They're really hydrating to my lips and they have the perfect amount of opacity to them. There's a product we're going to talk about next that I just did not like the opacity of. This I item is perfect. It's that perfect amount of like a jello like finish. The translucency is just perfect for the actual texture that it is. It doesn't bleed. It doesn't feather. It lasts a decent amount of times on my lips. And even when it fades, you can still feel your lips being relatively hydrated. Neither of the shades that I have have any shimmer in them. And I love it. These are described as a next gen burn free plumping glaze that visibly plumps lips with hydration. The restoring non-sticky for in one fuses lip oil, balm, plumper, and gloss. There's definitely no burning. There's definitely no stinging. There's no even like minty taste or scent to these at all. So I'm kind of surprised that they've incorporated the word lip plumper into this product because I wouldn't say that it plumped my lips. The only quote unquote lip plumping effect you're gonna get is when you apply pretty much any lip gloss because it does smooth your lips out and create a shine. It does make your lips look fuller, but it's more just a trick of the light. It's not actually like filling your lips with plumpness. I'm not getting any scent. There's no taste to these. I think these are really, really good glosses. Now, in contrast to these, the item I did not like that I actually already passed on to a friend because she wanted to try them were the Summer Fridays lip oils. To be specific, these are called the Summer Fridays Dream Lip Oils. They came in four different shades and I did not like these. I was not a fan. The pigmentation of these was very odd for the consistency of the product. The product was a thinner, only slightly thick lip oil. So it didn't last on the lips very long. And I found they had honestly too much pigmentation. Considering how slippy they were, they would just bleed all over like the outside of my lips. And it came with a very big oversized applicator, which did not help with the fact that they were so pigmented. So you just got way too much product on your lips. And I was not a fan. They they also made my lips tingle, but not in an obvious plumping way. What I mean by that is when a plumping lip product has a clear burning sensation or a clear cooling sensation, it's very obvious that that's what's happening on your lips. But these lip oils had this almost like they made my lips numb almost. And it wasn't super obvious that that was supposed to be the case. The best way I can describe it is it felt like I was having an allergic reaction. If you've ever had an allergic reaction to a lip product and you've had your lips kind of go just like numb, they're not burning, they're not cooling. It's just almost 
numbing your mouth and you're just like, this isn't supposed to happen. Something just feels off. That's how my lips felt when I was wearing those lip oils. So because of that, I passed them on. They weren't anything that I could see myself getting use out of. I honestly kind of dreaded putting them on just because of that weird numbing sensation. I don't know if that's been everybody's experience with them or if that's just mine. Maybe I genuinely am allergic to something that's in them, but I did not like those. I couldn't recommend those. I think if you're looking for a Summer Fridays lip product, personally, between the lip oil and the lip butter balms, this is the better way to go. Summer Fridays just came out with this scent in their lip butter balm. This is called Birthday Cake. It is a sheer, pretty much clear base with this really pretty micro fine, almost frosty shimmer in it. Only if you super layer it up will you really be able to tell how frosty this item is. It does just give you like a really pretty golden shimmery glow on the lip. I think this would be such a pretty item to layer over almost any lip liner, any lipstick. If you just want to add a gloss and a little bit of shimmer, this is so good. This item is honestly one of my go-tos for just a genuinely hydrating, genuinely good lip balm. It's sometimes hard to just find a really good power horse lip balm. I will even use the vanilla one of this. The It's basically clear. I'll use it as an overnight lip mask in place of my Laneige it does just as good of a job I find that it goes on super smooth and then after about 10 minutes or so it kind of sets up on your lips these have a cult following and I see why I do see why Summer Fridays keeps releasing new shades and new flavors of this product because it is such a great formula and considering this particular shade does have shimmer in it I have found that it still delivers the same amount of hydration as their non-shimmery ones. It's not gritty or chunky on the lips at all, which is sometimes a fear when you have glitter or shimmer in a lip product. It's just so good. And the scent birthday cake, I mean, this item is genuinely scented. Like, you know the boxed yellow cake or just like, you know, the boxed Pillsbury cake mix or the Betty Crocker cake mix. When you mix up that cake batter and you just take a whiff from the bowl, it literally has that like fluffy cake, authentic cake scent. And I am all about it, you guys. I'm all about it. I really, really love this. This also is limited edition. So if you want it, maybe get it sooner rather than later. We're gonna continue on with lip products. I think I'm just gonna knock out all the lip products before we talk about the other stuff. But I did try one of the new Charlotte Tilbury lipsticks. This is her K-I-S-S-I-N-G kissing satin shine lipsticks. This is in the shade 90s pink. As always, Charlotte Tilbury's packaging, just stunning. A really pretty kind of vintage inspired packaging. This is the first time I've tried one of her satin finished lipsticks. I do really like the Matte Revolution lipsticks she has. And have I tried another formula from Charlotte Tilbury? Oh, I think I've tried like the regular, like the cream, cream finish ones. This one I am... I'm kind of 50-50 on this lipstick, I'm gonna be honest. In terms of color, you can see that it is a really, really pretty mid-tone rosy pink color. It is very distinctly pink. So 90s pink to me is the perfect name for this. To me, this is essentially as pink as I can go on my lips without it becoming obnoxiously pink. If you guys have tan skin or deeper skin, you probably know that sometimes a pink lipstick can be a little touch and go. Sometimes the pink is just not quite the right shade of pink or it's too pink and it's just, this is perfect. This really is a beautiful, beautiful shade. Now in terms of the formula, this is where things get a little sticky, literally sticky. Um, this formula is described as a moisturizing lipstick with a soft satin shine and long lasting buildable formula. It's not drying. I definitely wouldn't compare it to a true lip balm in terms of moisturization, but for a lipstick that has this much color payoff, I think it's very comfortable on the lips. But to me, the most iffy thing about this formula is the fact that it is long lasting for a lipstick, but because of that, I found that this kind of feels thicker and 
almost sticky on my lips. When you put it on, it goes on quite smooth, but it does go on thick. And then once it sets on your lips after, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, you can distinctly feel like a, like a sticky feeling on your mouth. Now that tack that it has on your mouth does allow it to have longevity, but again, it's gonna be something that you either like or you don't. It's not transfer proof. It will absolutely transfer to cups, to straws, etc. And it does have a really pretty shiny finish to it. It's not overly glossy. It's a true satin shine, but again, that stickiness that tackiness that it dries down to is what's giving it the longevity on your mouth but it's also what's giving you that kind of tactile experience that i don't think everybody would love charlotte tilbury came out with this formula in a handful of different shades i believe most of them are either reds or nudes and there are some really pretty colors this one was my favorite but they do have some really pretty colors i don't see myself getting another shade because i'm kind of 50 50 on the formula charlotte tilbury also really a handful of new shades of her lip cheat lip pencil and I picked up two I don't know if both of these are new I know that Hollywood honey I believe is definitely new I also have the shade in love trap love trap is the lighter of the two it's kind of a mid-tone pinky neutral color and then Hollywood honey is a beautiful medium brick red but it definitely has enough neutralness in it to make it not too too red or not too bright. Such a beautiful, beautiful color range on these lip cheat lip liners. And the reason I picked up two more is because I do love this formula. Originally, I tried it in Pillow Talk and Iconic Nude, I think. And over the years, I've realized those two shades, even though they are two of Charlotte Tilbury's most iconic shades in her line, they're too light for my skin tone. They're iconic if you have a lighter or medium skin tone, but if you're tan or deeper, I love that there are a lot more shades to pick from. Personally, I do love her Pillow Talk Medium on my skin tone. To me, that's like the perfect Pillow Talk in her range, again, for a tan complexion. But these two are also gorgeous. I actually have Love Trap on underneath the Coco, the House Labs lip gloss that we talked about earlier. And this is such a beautiful, beautiful combo. I have been loving Love Trap, but Hollywood Honey, equally gorgeous. Let's talk about this new lip product from Too Faced. This is called their Kissing Jelly Hydrating Lip Oil Gloss. I have it in the shade Sour Watermelon. I picked it up because of the shade. All of the shades in this lip gloss range have coordinating scents according to their flavor names. So there's like a bubblegum one, there's maybe a blue raspberry one. I don't even know. Now I'm, I'm missing the names, but this was the only one that I really really needed to get my hands on because oh my god this is a watermelon jolly rancher through and through this is watermelon jolly rancher if i'm being completely honest besides the scent of this product this doesn't offer a ton of uniqueness in terms of formula it's very very sheer i mean i'm sure you can expect that based on just the translucency from the package it's a super sheer very very minorly pink tinted lip product it's glossy it's jelly it looks really pretty on the lips it doesn't have the longest staying power but i didn't really expect that it's not sticky it's not goopy it's not thick it's easy to reapply to me this is an adult lip smackers lip gloss the reason i feel like that is because it has all of the cuteness and the little collectability as those lip smackers lip glosses that we all grew up with fun flavors fun colors really cute to look at cute little collection I mean I am obsessed with the watermelon scent of this but besides that as a lip product it's fine I don't have anything to complain about but to me I'm not quite as thrilled or excited about these even as I am with the house labs ones we've got to talk about this item that I was honestly really disappointed in I expected a lot from the elf skin this is the sun touchable wool glow spf 
30 broad spectrum. You guys know the one. This is the one that's supposed to be the dupe of the Super Goop Glow Screen. And I have actually tried this item before in their lighter shade. I wanna say it was called Sunlight, maybe. But I recently went ahead and repurchased this because I used the other one up, but I repurchased it in their darker shade that they call Sun Burst. Sunburst is the name of this one. And I expected this to be great. I mean, when you have tan skin tone or deeper skin tone, you know that sometimes finding an SPF is very tricky. The main issue is the white cast. It's really tricky to find a sunscreen that doesn't give you a white cast, especially at a really affordable price point. Oh, by the way, this wasn't purchased from Sephora. I purchased this from Ulta, but I figured I'd throw it into this video because it disappointed me and I wanted to talk about it. I really wanted this to work for me. You guys can see it looks like a pretty bronze color. It shears out into, oh, that's a really pretty bronze color. But the issue with this product is that it has glitter in it. Elf just went ahead and put legitimate chunks. We're talking chunks of gold glitter for what? elf for what i i mean i know twilight is really trendy right now i know the ColourPop and twilight collab just has been selling out over and over but i don't want to constantly look like a vampire i want to be able to have a daily glowy sunscreen that is genuinely a glow that doesn't have i'm talking like highlighter level of glitter i don't know how well you guys can see that on my skin, but it's it's glitter. I mean, it's straight glitter. I would literally use this as a highlighter just on the tops of my cheekbones and probably nowhere else. I suppose if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you want, um, here you go. This is the e.l.f. Skin Twilight collaboration of a face highlight sunscreen, but uh, this isn't, this isn't for me. And I was unfortunately really disappointed in it. I'm about to talk about something pretty controversial. And I know this is a very controversial opinion on the internet, but I have never found a product from Glow Recipe that I love. I have tried a lot of Glow Recipe products, a lot of them. And all I have experienced is either they're fine, they're neutral, they're not my holy grail, I'll use it up, but I won't purchase it again, or that they're genuinely bad. Like I genuinely don't think they do their job. I don't like them. I don't even wanna use this product up. This product lies somewhere in the middle because I honestly don't understand. I was excited to try this. This is the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Hue Drops in the shade Sun Glow. I was really excited to use this. I really was because the original niacinamide dew drops is super, super popular. I know people that literally use those up and they swear by them. And these smell also like watermelon, which as we've established, I love a watermelon scent. In terms of the way these look on the skin, I mean, it's definitely a sheer bronze shade. But again, I feel like this essentially has a glittery, bronzy look to it. You guys are gonna have to help me out here, okay? So imagine, we're all imagining together. I wake up, I wash my face, I do my toner, I do my face moisturizer, and then do I put this on? And then do I put sunscreen on top of that? Or do I do moisturizer, sunscreen, and then this? But if that's the case, I feel like the sunscreen layer is preventing the niacinamide from actually doing its job. So I'm not quite sure where to use this. Is this more skincare or is this more makeup? Where in the routine does this go? And then once you figure that out, okay, you've done it, let's say after sunscreen, let's say I moisturize, I put on my layer of sunscreen and then I do this and then I do foundation. I'm just confused because to me, this feels like an unnecessary layer. Do I use this when I'm not using makeup? Is this like a, you're going no makeup makeup and you want that light bronzy layer on your skin, just a little bit of tint, a little bit of glow, a lot of bit of shimmer. Again, if we're being honest, a lot of bit of shimmer. Um, is that when I'm using this? So I'm not putting foundation over this. I don't understand. I'm very confused. I think if this had sunscreen in it, like if this was a tinted sunscreen, I get it. Like I understand, I understand the purpose of the e.l.f. one, I get it. I know where to use it in my, you know, routine. It's just, this is straight glitter, so I don't like that. But this one has 
the shimmery glitteriness, but also no sunscreen element. So I don't understand how I use this, why I use this, where I use this. Is this makeup? Is this skincare? What is, what's the purpose? Oh my gosh, we have to talk about this Laura Mercier foundation. This thing went viral on TikTok, I believe. This is the Laura Mercier Real Flawless Weightless Perfecting Waterproof Foundation. I purchased it in the shade T, T-E-A, like T. Let me describe to you what this says it is, okay? This says a weightless foundation that blurs the line between makeup and skin with medium buildable coverage, waterproof wear, and up to 12 hours of fade-proof wear. So this item, I don't even have it anymore. I returned it. I don't love returning products, but I will return things that are absolutely horrendous. Items that I'm like, I will never wear this again. I can't pass this on to anybody. I don't want to give anybody the absolute torture of having to use this. That's how I felt like this foundation was. I've learned to be a little weary of makeup things that go viral on TikTok because there's so much on TikTok that is so easy to draw your attention for a 60 second or a 90 second or a three minute TikTok. But when it comes to actually wearing the product, actually seeing it in everyday use, you don't get those opinions on TikTok very often. No offense to the TikTok creators by any means, but I feel like a lot of times they are going for the wow factor. They're going for the quick, like, wow, that looks amazing. But how does it look a few hours later? Because when we're talking foundation, that matters. And that's where I feel like this product did not, um, nobody talked about the wear of this. It's super thin and super full coverage. So again, those TikTok videos that you see are just insanely full coverage. They will blend it on with the brush and it's like freaking Photoshop. Just you're using that freaking smoothing tool, that face tuned tool visually. It's insane. And it is thin because it is kind of an oily serum-y texture. It's not a thick cream, but the issue is that oily serum-y texture is so thin, it's slippy. It slips on the skin. So once you get it on and you're wearing it throughout the day, that thing is slipping and sliding and it is looking bad. It's looking bad. You guys, I have oily combination skin. I would say my skin is drier in some spots, but overall my main issue is oil breakthrough and this foundation did not stand the test of time. After just two hours, my skin, we're talking hot dog skin, you guys. It looked like greasy, disgusting. It was breaking up. It was slipping and sliding. There were patches that had foundation, patches that didn't have foundation. My entire forehead was like oil slick central. It was so bad. And again, for the shock factor, for the wow factor, for the initial application, you could be like, wow, amazing. But when it wears, it's not cute. It's not cute. It's not an item I can recommend. If you guys have actually gotten this foundation to work, I'd love to know your success stories in the comments below because I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine having that item wear on anybody's skin and it not look horrific. Another item that I know has done its rounds all over the internet and and beyond. Um, the Sol de Janeiro Delicia Drench Body Butter. This is Sol de Janeiro's newest scent of body butter. They also have it in a body mist as of course they would. This has been dubbed as the spider body butter online. Um, if you guys know, it was apparently, I think it was some somebody wrote a review somewhere basically saying that she loved the body butter, but it was attracting spiders and she was literally chased around her house by spiders every time she wore this body butter. Hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Um, I, I hate spiders. So when I heard that, um, I definitely got a little weirded out because even the slight, the subtlest, the little minuscule of chance that that was true did kind of freak me out a little. But I used this, I did use this body butter and there's a few things that I didn't. I didn't like about it. First off, it's really thick. It's a super, super thick, almost like, it's not even a body butter. It's almost like a body balm. You have to kind of 
scoop it into your hands and really blend it in. And once it starts heating up with the heat of your body, it does blend in nicely and it doesn't feel heavy necessarily on the skin. I do think it's nice. I think if you need something thicker than their traditional Boom Boom Cream or any of the other body butters in the Sol de Janeiro lineup, this one is definitely the most hydrating that I've tried and it's the thickest. The thing I did not like about this, and I know again, this is gonna be a really polarizing opinion. I don't like the scent of this. I don't like it, you guys. I love, if you guys watched my perfume video, I love a vanilla scent. I love a gourmand scent. I love anything that's like edible and sweet and delicious. And I know that's what this body butter was supposed to be, but to me and to my nose, all I get is nail salon. This scent is supposed to have notes of vanilla orchid and sheer sandalwood. And I love both of those scent notes, but the combination that is in this body butter and of course the body mist that corresponds to it, to me, there's something about it that smells like a nail salon. Acetone mixed with the cotton, mixed with whatever they put into those pedicure tubs and just everything in the air and you walk in and I, it was giving me a headache. I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. I am not particularly sensitive to scents. There's very few scents that actually give me headaches or make me feel unwell. And for some reason, this was one of them. I guess the pro is that it's not super strong. So if somebody else is wearing it, I don't see myself getting a headache from that. But when I slathered it all over my body and I was getting whiffs of it throughout the day, I, my stomach kept turning. It it was, it's probably just a me thing because this seems to be a very hot seller. I know plenty of people that love this item, plenty of people that say this smells absolutely delicious to them. But again, to me, it's straight nail salon. Like it's the combo of the acetone and everything. And I just, I couldn't wear this personally. What's really funny is that this next fragrance I'm gonna talk about has been compared to that Sol de Janeiro fragrance quite a few times, and I can wear this. I actually love this. This is the Five Cents In Too Deep Eau de Parfum. As you can see, I purchased the travel size. This item has been sold out at Sephora for so long. I probably would've just went ahead and purchased the actual like bigger bottle that they have, but I couldn't. I couldn't get it. It's literally sold out all the time. And I just so happened to find this item in a Sephora store. And then when I was checking out with this perfume, amongst other things, of course, the girl who was scanning me through, she literally stopped when she saw this and looked at me and goes, have you used this perfume before? And I was like, uh, no, I haven't, but I'm really excited to, why? And she goes, this is my favorite perfume of all time. You made the best decision of your life. And you know what, you guys? This is beautiful. This is beautiful. It is a beautiful, beautiful perfume. To me, it does not smell like the Sol de Janeiro one in the slightest. In terms of the notes, this one has Tahitian vanilla, Australian sandalwood, and sparkling sugar. Very odd because of course, vanilla and sandalwood were in the other fragrance, but this one to me, is so much better. It's beautiful, it's sweet, it's vanilla without being too like cloying vanilla. This is, it still has a slight lightness to it, a brightness to it. I feel like this would be a beautiful vanilla to even pull into the springtime. It must be the sparkling sugar that's giving it that lightness. I think it's so pretty. I'm so happy to have this. The only thing I would say about this is I don't feel like the longevity is very long. I think it smells delicious when it's on you, but I've only gotten maybe two to three hours of wear out of this before I felt like I needed to reapply it. Not the end of the world because I do have it in a travel size, so I can take it with me if I want to reapply, but just something to keep in mind. If you're looking for a lot of staying power, this might not be the one. And then the final item I wanted to talk about, another scent that has been sold out on the Sephora website for so long. I was really lucky. I put in my email address to have them email me when this came back in stock and I was able to snatch it during a restock. This is the Fleur Vanilla Skin Hair and Body 
fragrance mist. This is the big guy, a nice jumbo eight fluid ounce of this. And oh my God, this smells so good. Yeah, I love this. Another vanilla scent. The notes in here are sugar crystals, cashmere wood, and vanilla. And mm, this is so so good. Similar to the last one, if I were to compare these two, the Fleur one is definitely richer. It's deeper. It's more authentically a rich vanilla, in my opinion. This one is just lighter, brighter. They're different for sure, but they're both clearly vanilla. Mm, I love this one. Oh my goodness. Of course, you can use it in your hair and body. It is a fragrance mist, so it doesn't have the longevity or the projection that a normal perfume would have. But to be honest, for a body mist, I do think this has pretty decent staying power. I would give it about two hours or so and then reapply it if you want to. I am kind of wondering and kind of hoping that Fleur releases this in a proper like eau de parfum, something that has longevity and projection to it because the scent is so delicious. I would absolutely want this in a proper perfume. If Fleur ever wanted to release it, I would absolutely buy it. And the thing I love the most about this is considering it's a body fragrance mist. I feel like a lot of times fragrance mists aren't super complex. A lot of times if you try something like a Bath and Body Works fragrance mist or just fragrance mists in general tend to be pretty like one or two notes. You know, they don't tend to be super complex or they don't feel like a proper perfume. They do feel pretty simple. And this to me feels like a perfume. Like if I were to smell this and I didn't know it was a body mist, I would be like, yeah, that's that's a perfume bottle. It feels complex. It feels high end. It feels niche. Like it feels expensive, but it is just in a more watered down version. So you kind of get all the benefits of a nice, unique, complex, perfume but it's just lighter weight so I love this I do think this is a win and there we have it you guys that is everything that I have tested and tried from Sephora over the past month or so with the one honorable mention from Ulta and by that I mean definitely dishonorable mention do not do not get this shade of this product I hope you guys enjoyed this video like I said everything will be listed and linked in the description box below if there's any other products that you guys think I should test out if there's anything that has recently released that you're like oh Ishani I want to know your thoughts on that or oh Ishani I tested this and I think you would absolutely love it please try it out because I highly highly recommend it leave those items in the comments below as well. I would love to try anything you guys want me to. But either way, thank you so much for being here. I love you guys. I appreciate you more than you will ever know. And I will talk to you in my next video very soon. I'll see you then. Bye.